Hi beautiful people, welcome back to The Overwhelmed Woman. I'm Emma and if life has left you feeling derailed, you're not on your own. But I've got a gem of a little activity that might really help you get on track. I was amazed how much it helped me and I can't recommend it enough. So it's the principle of looking at your life in six key areas. Home, work, money, love, body and soul. And looking at the reality of the life you've got now with the life you imagined you'd have, when you were little and how closely or not the two align. So for example, what did you imagine your partner would be like when you were little? For me, I had visions of a 1930s glamorous movie star type character that would sweep me off my feet, all suited and booted and have big displays of public affection. And my first husband was just like that and what a disappointment that was. <laughs> Whereas my second husband, Jay, is a body shorts and t-shirts kind of guy so far removed from that image in my mind of what I wanted but infinitely everything I need and more because I realised as much as I love the aesthetics of that 1930s gent it was the qualities I associated that I wanted in love so I wanted to feel cherished, protected, valued and respected so that's when I've realised that actually the man of my dreams isn't the man that I envisaged but he's so much better and he's easy on the eye, so every cloud. <laughs> then, you know your home. Did you imagine you'd live in a great big castle and it was very luxurious and flamboyant? And instead, like me, you've got a very, very small 1970s semi-detached. Well, I wanted to live in Downton Abbey, but I've realised what I wanted from that, the qualities I wanted, was for my home to feel safe, inviting, welcoming, to have some beautiful things, ideally some throws and scatter cushions, which I've got, and an open fire. And I've got it. So my home is nothing like I dreamed it would be, but is perfect just the way it is. Although if anyone's watching and they have got a new kitchen going, <laughs> mine is literally falling apart and uh, full of damp, but it's a first world problem. When you think of your body, what did you want? Um, you know, one of the things I always dreamed I'd have was long flowing Rapunzel style hair. Never gonna happen. My hair is fine, it breaks, it comes out in handfuls. Can't do anything about that. But I've realized that certainly there are things that I can do to make myself feel better physically and emotionally. And what I needed to do as part of that was exercise, which I think is the work of Satan. <laughs> But instead, I found four minute to batter exercise routines on YouTube and what a game changer they've been to my physical and mental well-being. So, you know, your body, we, we get given what we're given and, um, you know, what we should be very grateful for that. And um, there's so much out there on social media and on the, the media, you know, advertisements and all of that stuff that constantly make you question the validity of your own self and that you're not good enough but actually you are and if you've got your physical health you are richer than anybody in the world so count your blessings and just be happy with the person that you are and confident in that person as well. When it comes to your soul connections, this is your connection with yourself and the world around you and other people. You know maybe you have got a circle around you that aren't really in your corner. Well, maybe you need to change your circle. <laughs> and you know, when it comes to our connections with families and friends, are you with people in your life out of obligation, misplaced loyalty, fear? Um, are you contributing to the friends and the connections in your life? Are you giving of yourself or could you do better? And when you start re-evaluating your friendships, it's not a nice thing to do. And I'm certainly not saying you need to go and suddenly start cutting all your friends away, but it's just actually saying, you know, whatever you think about this ethereal world hereafter, this one is the one we're in now. And spend it with the people that have got your back and who love you and for whom you feel the same. And um, they are the people that you need to invest your time in. It's not about how many followers you've got on Instagram on all of, or all of that stuff. It's about the people that are your soul connection. They're the people that are really going to matter. And maybe you are a bit of a loner, you know, maybe life has not given you that. And maybe your connections are found in the world around you. So, you know, are there things that you can do to be part of that? Are there people, are there 
environments you can volunteer in or community groups you can get involved with is it just a case of just listening to the sounds of the sea and reconnecting you know when my lovely Joe was really poorly last year he couldn't go to the beach like he loves to and for him one of the things that gave him comfort and solace was listening to the sounds of the sea and the rain so it wasn't a golden ticket it didn't suddenly make anything better but it helped um, when it comes to your work, you know, maybe you wanted to be a doctor and you are a care worker, so your job is not the same. But what was it about the job you thought you wanted to be, you wanted to do that appealed to you? So if you wanted to be a doctor, was it because you wanted to serve your community or physically help people, make them feel reassured or better? So the work you're doing as a care worker is not a doctor, but you are actually doing so much of those qualities so equally you know maybe you have big dreams of being in a big corporation and uh you know being quite at the top of your tree and um you know having all of that and maybe you've got it and you've never felt more stressed and unhappy maybe for you it's about changing tack and maybe even working for a smaller company or a company where you're going to feel more valued um you know i've been in corporate corporate environments most of my adult life and um, I've changed that completely in the last few months and I work for myself and it's been very frightening and very scary but I've never felt happier or more content and um, you know that then leads to about your ethics and where you are where you know where your own moral code is as well and all of that kind of stuff so there's lots to think about. I think if I covered everything, have I done love, work, money? I'm not sure if I've talked about money. That's a big one, isn't it? Um, often we think money is going to make us happy. Believe you me, I know people with tons of it and they've never been more unhappy. If you've got enough to put a roof over your head and feed your family, first of all, you are blessed indeed. I've realize now one of the things that makes me miserable is comparing myself to other people and when I see other people having stuff going places buying things and I just have to realize their journey is different to mine and um, start counting my blessings and realizing well you know what I've got enough money to pay my mortgage feed my family that's good enough for me and anything extra is a bonus. But let's be honest, even if I've got a ton of money tomorrow, what am I going to buy? Because I can't even fit it in this house if I bought it. <laughs> so the benefits of living in a small house. Um, but you know what? We, we have to evaluate what our wants and our needs are. And they are very different. And when I hear people moaning about a lot of stuff, I think, blimey, if that's all you've got to moan about, you're not doing too badly. So um, maybe you need to rethink the money that you have got and actually... As part of that you might find you've actually you know obviously this is not going to apply to all of you but you might find you've got more money than you think you're just spending it on crap you don't need to sustain a lifestyle you haven't got time to enjoy <laughs> and if that's you that's not a judgment I'm just saying I know a lot of people like that too so anyway I hope that's helped it really helped me it made me realize there were a couple of little tweaks like the exercise thing that I needed to rethink and I needed to put some effort in and commitment it made me realize there were some big things I needed to change which included some of my connections and my job um more recently I've questioned you know my moral code and ethics as part of the job I'm doing now so that's been a positive thing as well and um, it's also made me massively count my blessings and realize you know what the life I've got now is nothing like the life I dreamed or hoped I'd have. But in so many ways, I am, um, you know, it's more than I dreamed of. It just looks very different indeed. So anyway, lovely people, massive love to you as always. I'd love you to subscribe to the channel. Leave me a comment so I can say hello. Become an overwhelmer <laughs> and join me. And um, until next time, remember we all deserve to lead an emotionally and physically clutter-free life. And um, we're all overwhelmed just doing the best we can. And now I'm going to get a cup of tea. Massive love to you as always.